Hello everyone, thanks for watching. My name is Nathaniel Kramer, also known as Preaching Musician here on YouTube. And today uh, I'm going to be doing the second video of this series on the road to Calvary, taking from uh, Isaiah chapter 53. And the last video we talked about Jesus' birth and his upbringing and what he went through coming down to earth and all that he gave up. And there's a lot that the Bible speaks, of, uh, speaks about that, but I'm going to go ahead and look at Isaiah 53 and look at what uh, the prophet Isaiah emphasized in the, verse, in the second verse of this passage. So it says in verse 1, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of, of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So right there it says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. And we, we spoke about that in the last video. You can go back and watch that if you'd like. But in this video, we're going to talk about what it emphasizes there in the next phrase. It says, He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see Him, there is no beauty that we should desire Him. And I think the central word on that passage is the word beauty. And when we think of beauty, I think maybe you think of a sunset or, or a beautiful mountain or a beautiful landscape. And I've seen quite a few things that just took my breath away. Things that I would look at and just just make me just not be able to think for a moment. Maybe even my heart skip for a moment. And there are beautiful things in nature. There are beautiful things in this world. But we must remember that all beauty, all true beauty comes. It stems from the beauty of our Lord and Savior. When He was on earth, uh, He veiled that beauty that He had in heaven. That beauty that people would come down and uh, come to His throne room and just gaze upon and worship Him for for countless, countless hours. I know there's no time in heaven, but but think about, I mean, if he had that kind of beauty, imagine the seraphims, imagine these beings that were much more be beautiful than anything we've ever seen. When they approach the throne and they see the beauty of our, of, of our Lord, can you imagine what they must do? They must just fall and bow. And that's all you can do when you see, the, see his beauty. There, there is no... No, uh, nothing that compares. There's nothing that we can say, okay, he kind of looks like this, he kind of looks like that. His beauty is truly holy. It's truly above and beyond anything that we have ever seen. Because the most beautiful thing we've ever seen is only, it, it's like the moon's brightness compared to the sun's. Not, it, and that's not even a good comparison. But it's just a microscopic, uh, um, a microscopic reflection of the beauty of our Savior. And to think about that, uh, that's, it's not just his beauty that he gave up. It wasn't just the fact that he was beautiful and he veiled it, but it was what it caused others to see in him. When he came to earth, he could have revealed his beauty, and they would not have seen him in the same manner. They wouldn't have looked at him the same way. It doesn't just say that he, that he had no beauty. It, just, it says that he had no beauty that we should desire him. And the whole purpose for masking his beauty was so that when people saw him they wouldn't desire him the same way that he was desired in heaven they wouldn't look at him the same way that everyone looked at him in heaven and you can see if you read the gospels that he was persecuted he was made fun of he was spat upon they tried to kill him numerous times and finally they did nail him to a cross and we see that these things would not have happened there's just no way that these people would have treated him like this had they seen his true beauty. And when I think about beauty and, and, and not just the fact that he was beautiful, but the desire that he that that his beauty demands, I also wonder what we would be willing to give up for him. Is there anything that you can think of in your life that, that you would point to to say, and that's something that I have that people desire? Maybe it's a talent. Maybe, maybe you think you do look good or <laughs> You know, my, my wife says I look good, so I don't know, maybe I believe her. But, you know, some, there's a lot of things that people look at and say, hey, I, I have something that I think that causes others to desire me. I wonder if God came to you and said, hey, I want you to give that up for me. Would you be willing to do that? He was willing to give up his beauty for you. Would you be willing to give up whatever that is for him? Maybe it's a trade. Maybe it's, like I said, a talent. Maybe it's just, uh, you know, I don't know, it could be anything. But what are you willing to give up for him? Because he was willing to give up, give it all up for him, for you. But the story doesn't end in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 2. We're going to go ahead and skip to the very end. 
You see, when we, when we when he comes back and when we see him again, we will see him in his beauty. We will see him in the majesty that he has. And God will literally have to uh, make us into someone different for us to even be able to take in his beauty. And it's amazing to think about. In the form that we are in today, we could not even see his beauty. We wouldn't even be able to take it in. That's how beautiful he is. But God will transform us so that when we behold him, we will see him as he is. What a wonderful thought that is, that one day we will view the beauty, the wonderful beauty that he has. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you are blessed by this video. God bless you.